I want to start with this. I'm not going to ask you a lot of basketball questions, but I do want to start here. This week, you got Indy, you got Milwaukee. Are there ever emotions when you're playing teams that you've you've had relationships with? Uh, you know, Indy, I had in both both organizations, both cities, I had uh, three great years um, where I got to know really good people, um, and I, I developed as a player, as a person in those cities, um, and my foundation was really in touch with those communities. Um, so, of course, their emotions, of course, uh, I still have relationships in those places. Um, but, you know, it's about, it's about competing at the highest level. What was that process like? I heard you say, you know, from draft night and potential with the, the Wizards and thinking about that to sort of having a choice. Now that you've had time to process it, you know, what, what was that experience like? Um, you know, I, I think I ended up in a great situation in Boston. I, will, I do want to say that. Um, but, you know, it, it's, it, it's mixed emotions, you know. I, I'm coming from a team in Indiana that uh, we had good years, um, and uh, you know it, there comes a time with with most players in the NBA on most teams where it's time to move on, and that was, it was my time. Um, but Indiana really gave me a choice um, to to not not I won't I won't say pick, um, but which team to really pursue a trade with, and um, they did right by me, and I you know I'll never forget that. Um, so. Uh, you know, it's been it's been a lot of mixed emotions. Uh, leaving Milwaukee, it was mixed emotions. Leaving Indy, it was mixed emotions. But um, you know, I'm in a good place. What has been? What's the biggest thing that maybe you didn't know coming to this organization that you've learned here? What's been the biggest kind of takeaway from your first? I mean, what is it now? Six months here. Uh, it's a well-oiled machine. Um, just just the uh, continuity that it sort of functions at. Um, you know, nothing's really disrupted. A uh, guy goes down, the next guy fills in. Everybody seems to be in, you know, there, there's a hierarchy here. Everybody seems to sort of fall in line on the court to the front office, everybody to, you know, the, the nutrition staff. Um, everybody's in constant communication, which I really like. There are no uh, drop balls anywhere, um, which is it, it's really good, really good environment for the players. Take me off the court. You guys had a rare, I, I call it an off day. You still got to do probably film and, and get your treatment and all that. But what, what's an off day for Malcolm Brogdon? Like, what do you do during your time away from basketball? Well, I, I hang out with my family. Um, uh, I really just take time to I will honestly watch a lot of basketball. Uh, it's hard to give your mind a rest when all you can think <laughs> about right. is basketball. But um, I hang out with my family and uh, uh, hang out with my dogs. I was going to say, so some of these guys play video games, some of them golf. Like, your daughters, are they into starting to get into stuff? Are they dragging you towards stuff? Like, cause, I mean, uh, my kids would sit there with Instagram all day yeah, if I wanted no, I'm, to. I'm really just enjoying my daughter, taking her on walks, taking her to the park. Um, playing nonstop in the house uh, and uh, taking my dogs on walks and playing with them as well. So it's, you know, I'm not working in the, in the gym, but I'm working at home. What's, uh, how old is your daughter and how, what kind of dogs do you have? Uh, I have a two-year-old daughter and um, I have a Doberman and a Sharpe. Oof, all right. Yeah, yeah. You're gonna, they're keeping you busy then. Yeah, yeah, cool. Is, is two-year-old starting to gravitate towards anything TV-wise? Are you watching Paw Patrol? Uh, like what's, what's going on on, on the we TV? We watch a lot of Coco Melon. Yes. Uh, we watch um, <laughs> Sing 2. A lot. Mm -hmm. We watch Frozen. Um, there, there are a few of them. We, we in Kanto, we watch, we watch nice. those a lot. So there was a stretch where Brad Stevens had to sing like Frozen for for months when his his daughter was going through that phase. So uh, oh, I'm singing, I'm singing every song, you know, under the sun uh, that my daughter likes. She likes it. I'm singing it. So uh, no, it's it's all good. It's all fun. What's on Malcolm Brogdon's Christmas list? Nothing really. It's time with my family. I I just want time with my family. That's really it. Uh, you know, in a, in a chaotic season, every season is chaos. Um, you just want time with your family. You, you want to be here for Christmas. You know, thankfully this team made it to the finals last year, so we're here on Christmas. Um, and that's a blessing in itself, so that's really all I can ask for. What was the best Christmas present you ever got as a kid? Oh, uh, I think I got an Xbox Ooh. when the first Xbox came out. Um, that was huge because that was like the next generation, mm -hmm. the next like huge step of uh, sort of gaming electronics. Are you still into gaming or are you just... Uh, Not at all, yeah. oh, man. I'm, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, some of these guys take it on the road with them. No, no, no. Some guys are serious with it. I just, it, it fell off for me, man. It, once you have kids or, uh, <laughs> so you know, true. other things going on, man, you, you don't really have time. Yeah, I'm with you there. What, what else do you like to do when you get away? Like, I mean, I know you traveled over the summer, you said, right? Like, how, how important is that stuff for you to just be out and about and, and especially helping people? I know what, you know how much you're involved with that. It's super important. Um, you know, for me, that stuff is more important than basketball. Traveling uh, with my family is the most important thing to mm -hmm. me, um, as well as helping people while I get to travel. 
um, being able to experience different cultures, different people, um, and expose my my daughter and, and my family to that that's that's huge for me. What uh, you, when you got here, you said that one of the, the things you were most looking forward to was playing with Al. Was what was that from? Was that from watching him on the Hawks as a kid? Yeah, right? just, just watching him in Atlanta, growing up in Atlanta, watching him, um, and just watching the way he conducts himself. Um, he's just a class act. He, he's a classy guy, uh, the ultimate pro. Um, so you know, it's been a pleasure playing with him. What's it like going uh, again? I think you have an expectation being on the outside. What's it like when you go to these cities and there's Celtics fans everywhere? Is it weird how much this team travels? Uh, it, it, it's not. I wouldn't say it's weird. It's awesome. It's it's shocking and, and surprising and awesome. Um, these really are the best fans in the NBA. I've heard people say that, mm -hmm. but you can't really fully experience it um, or enjoy it until you're a Celtic. Um, so to see how many fans, sometimes it feels like they're half half of the you know opposing arena is, is full of Celtics fans. So it's pretty amazing. Uh, your three point percentage was leading the league. I'd have to check, but I, pretty close. Like, what has been the difference for you this year? Is it just, I mean, are you getting that much more space because teams are playing you differently? Is that just the impact of playing on a good team? Absolutely. Yeah, I think it's that really that simple. I'm not taking as many threes off the dribble, um, and teams aren't guarding me. I'm not the first option, so I don't I don't get the first option attention, uh, which makes my shots easy. Uh, let's see what else do I have on my list for you. Oh, Joe, just tell me about Joe. Like again, the, the, you come into a situation, things change. What's it been like learning from Joe Mazzula? Man, he's a. Uh, I think he's been great um, to step into the position he stepped in, um, sort of a, a chaotic situation, um, and to handle it the way he's handled it. Um, I think he's been phenomenal. Um, of course, there's going to be a learning curve for him, uh, which is expected, and a learning curve for the players learning from him and his new coaching style. Um, I think he's been great. He's so detail oriented. He's so communicative with the players, um, and you know he's a he's a process oriented guy. You know in life, and in uh, you know in how he coaches us. And last thing, what, give me one teammate that either was completely opposite of what you thought before you got here, or like somebody that just jumped out. Like a lot of people get here and they're like Grant talks as much as you as you think. Like what what has jumped out about this locker room since you've been here? Uh, I think Jason Tatum. Um, he's really as humble um, and as good of a guy as they come, um, especially as a superstar. It's hard to find, you know, superstars that are uh, really as laid back and personable um, and classy as he is. And, uh, you know, he's, he's, he's a well-rounded guy. A lot. One more thing. Do you think about six man at all? Like you were, you, you were quick to embrace that role. Do you think about if this team is successful, if you played it the way you do, would that award mean something if you were in that conversation? Look, that's for me. That's not important at all. Like I really don't, I don't care about that award at all. I, I really want to win with this team. I came here to win a championship to put up Banner 18, um, and that accolade really means nothing. I, I want to win. I want to win. I love it. That's gonna get fans excited. Yeah. Thank you, Malcolm. Thank you. Presented by your New England Ford dealers. Built for America. Built Ford proud.